Well, as always, I want to thank everyone who is uh, listening. It's uh, wonderful to have you join us for this online worship of Faith United Lutheran Church. And I am Pastor Tom Schaefer, the um, pastor of Faith United, and very glad to be so. Um, just a reminder to everyone that in-person worship will begin next Sunday. So June 14th will be in-person worship. There's a lot of uh, uh, procedures and so forth that go along with that. So please do check out our Facebook page or our website for information regarding that. Uh, you can find our website at uh, faithunited.church, www.faithunited.church is where you can find that. And then you can look us up as uh, Faith United Lutheran Church on Facebook. Uh, we'd love to have you join us, um, and that will be next week. But we will still be doing uh, online uh, worship also, a version of our, of our online worship. And... Um, because of that, I want you to just take a moment to subscribe uh, to our channel so that you'll receive the updates uh, for our worship as they're posted. There should be down, I'm not sure which corner it is in of your, of your screen, but you'll see the logo of Faith United Lutheran Church. If you just hover your mouse over that, it will give you the option to subscribe. So go ahead and click that right now, if you would. And uh, I'm going to share a little bit about what's going on today. So uh, this week, we actually have two messages. We have two sermons. Um, now, the reason for that is that the presiding bishop of the ELCA, Elizabeth Eaton, has sent uh, a message for the church to hear. So obviously, I, you know, I wanted to share that, have uh, you all have the opportunity to hear from the presiding bishop. But I also thought it was really important uh, for you to hear from your pastor also. So there are two messages, two sermons this week. And uh, so I want to jump in and uh, we're going to start with, we're in 1 Corinthians. The 15th chapter is where we will be reading from. So let's take a look at that now, starting at the first verse. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what in turn I had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your hope has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Then it is coming those who belong to Christ. Paul starts out here saying, let me remind you of the good news. Now, we could all use some good news, couldn't we? We could all use some good news in 2020. 2020 has been a year that this world would like to forget. There, of course, have been good things that have happened, but collectively for our world, for our country, the year 2020 has been, well, it's been a bad one. In my first recorded message after the lockdown, I said that our world will have changed forever. 
because of this. I don't think I could have imagined how true that was. There are almost 400,000 reported deaths worldwide, reported deaths, over 6 million confirmed cases of COVID-19. Many believe, uh, scientists believe that we will see more viruses like COVID-19 appear with actually greater frequency. Why? Because as humanity continues to consume more and expand more throughout nature, the natural divides are being removed between humanity and animals carrying viruses that have never been in contact with humanity before. Now our hope and belief is that we are through the worst of it at this point. But just when there seemed to be some light at the end of the tunnel, George Floyd died at the hands of police. And all of the pent up anger and frustration from both recent events and the long history of prejudice in our country erupted onto our streets and across our nation. It has divided our already torn nation when we desperately needed some unity. And here's the thing. It's tough to talk about these things. When people are fighting, when people are this emotionally volatile, Words are judged quickly and must be selected very carefully. And I know I am so much more ill-equipped than so many other people to be talking about these issues. But even amidst this division, let me say some things that I believe we can all agree on. A world where a virus kills hundreds of thousands of people is a broken world. A world where anyone dies at the hands of police is a broken world. A world where people believe they still need to peaceably protest the issues of racism, prejudice, inequality, and injustice is a broken world. A world where people loot, rob, destroy, and damage the well-being of their brother and neighbor is a broken world. I think we can agree on those things. Now, let me tell you what the Bible says is the cause of these things, all of these things. It's us. It's you and me. It's humanity. In our reading today, Paul says, since death came into the world through a human being, the story Paul's talking about is the creation story, Adam and Eve. And look, I don't really care whether you believe Adam and Eve actually existed. What I do want you to hear is what the story tells us. And the story says, the story tells us that God gave humanity the job of caring for this world and caring for one another. You, you see that in the story of Adam and Eve and, and in the story of their children, Cain and Abel. So when we learned to sin, this world and our relationships in it suffered because of it. In Romans chapter 8 from the Bible, Paul says, For the creation was subjected to futility. Listen to that. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it. And then just a few words later, Paul says that the world is in bondage to decay. This world is broken. This nation is broken. The ability for us to love one another is broken because of our sin. A little later in 1 Corinthians, Paul writes, the sting of death is sin. Let me say that another way. Humanity's sin is the venom 
that causes the death and decay of this world. We see that, don't we? We see that in some very painful ways today around our country. So where do you put your hope in a time like this? Now, some will want to put their hope in humanity, that we can do better, that we will get better, we will be better. I understand it. I get it. We want to believe that about ourselves, but I can't share that hope. I mean, can we get better? Sure. But can we eradicate hatred, injustice, and sin? Humanity has had literally millions of years to evolve out of our sin, and we haven't done it. What I believe, what I have faith in, what I have to have faith in, is what Paul says. Our only hope is Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ means that he conquered sin and death, paving the way for a new life, a new creation. Paul says it this way, for as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Elsewhere, Paul says it like this, so if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. What the Christian faith says is that because of Jesus Christ, there will be a new creation. I know you might not believe in Jesus. But I ask you, do you really want to put your hope in humanity? Do you want to put your hope there. I, w I wish I could say that that was something I could, I could do. But the events of our world, the condition of our world, it tells me otherwise. But there is a hope to be had in Jesus. There is a hope that God will reconcile this world. As Paul says. But what do we do with that now? What difference does all that make now? What difference does that make today? as we face what we're facing as a world, as a country. Well, what Paul also says there is that God will reconcile the world and that he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So we don't just hope and wait. What the Bible says is that we hope and we do. 
we do the work of reconciliation. We do the work of justice and love and peace now. We do the work of caring for our planet now, not because we have hope in ourselves, but because our hope is found in another. Won't you join me in putting your hope there? Won't you join me in sharing that hope with this country and this world, that there is one that can make all things new, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Hey everyone, I was uh, driving home when I thought of uh, just a couple of things I wanted to say here as we uh, transition into Bishop Eaton's talk. Um, one is we're going to have a video before uh, we see Bishop Eaton speak. I thought it would be good to give you just a little bit of a, a break of having someone talk at you. And yet I do have something else I wanted to say. Um, so don't worry, I've pulled over. I'm not driving at the moment, um, but I just did want to uh, share this. Um, many of you don't know this, but I'm a huge fan of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, I've read a lot of books about Lincoln. I've uh, read books about his leadership. And um, Lincoln was a man who led his country in a powerful way when it was literally divided over issues of injustice and racism. And Lincoln once in a, in a speech was delivering what seemed like some kind words for the South. Uh, and this was a speech being done in the Union, and afterwards, a woman approached him who was very offended by this, that he would speak so kindly about an enemy. And Lincoln said, Madam, do I not defeat my enemy if I make them my friend? Those are words we need to hear, we need to live by. And they're words I hope you'll think about as you watch this next video. When I look into the face of my enemy, I see my
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, 